Hello, this is Spellbinder with this news update for today, January the 11th, 2011. It seems like uh, Mark Potok of the SPLC, the Southern Property Law Center, blames the radical right for Gifford's shooting. Turn to form, Mark Potok of the Southern Property Law Center wastes no time in pointing the finger at right-wing ideology as a motive for the assassination attempt of Congresswoman Gabriel Giffords. Meanwhile, Potok conveniently leaves out the fact that Gerald Longrenner listed the Communist Manifesto in the Min Kampf as one of his favorite books because it wouldn't fit into his demonization of the right wing and the patriot Americans. These people at the SPLC are just the opposite of Americanism. They're, they're, they make socialism look mild. These people are just evil along with the ADL. Just listen to how Oberman asked these pointing questions for the answer, and you can see on Oberman's face this is exactly what he wanted him to say. We are admittedly in somewhat speculative territory still here, as it clarifies. However, this is one of the rare cases where a political assassin, if Loeffner is indeed guilty, has been caught alive. And whatever questions we have tonight, the gunman himself, in theory, again Sunday, answer, although the sheriff says he has invoked his right to remain silent. Until then, let's draw on the expertise of the Southern Poverty Law Center, which tracks political militancy in this country. And Mark Potok is the a director piece of, of the work. Center's Intelligence Project. Thanks for your time tonight, sir. Thank you for having me, Kate. Loftner's internet trail, does it tell us anything about his politics? Does that specific reference to the 8th District, the Congresswoman's District, does that step out of the incoherence or is it just part of the incoherence? Well, you're right, that reading through all of his materials, or the materials that are purported to be his, uh, that he sounds quite uh, mad, out of his mind. But there is a thread through uh, the material that really uh, seems pretty clear, and that thread has to do with seeing the government uh, as an enemy. Uh, the books you mentioned, there's a theme that runs through all of them, in particular the Ayn Rand. Yeah, except the men come from the Commons Manifesto, which I will not mention because it would destroy my whole angle of demonization of the white ring, the right wing people of America. Yes, this guy is a piece of work. Look at him, he's in a suit and tie. What did I tell you in earlier videos about people in suit and tie on TV and people in white coats with stethoscopes on TV? You can't believe them. They act like they can tell you in your tell you that they're the gods of the experts and they're not they're nothing the, most of the time the people who point fingers are the ones who are guilty of the very crimes this guy is one of them Ayn Rand book uh, the idea of the individual against the state but there are ideas like the idea of the only legitimate currency being backed by gold and si silver what's wrong with gold and silver the whole country was based on it in the beginning over 213 plus years ago. Now what's wrong with that? Oh, all because some loon says something about it, you're going to demonize it now? And then blame something in 1990 when the two guys got together and tried to, tried to take us out of the uh, paper and put us back with gold and silver standards? Yeah, right. You know, that's a core idea of the uh, radical right in this country. The idea, weirdly enough, of controlling grammar, of somehow the government using grammar uh, to control the people uh, is an idea uh, that exists on the radical right. There's a particular person, a man named David Wynn Miller, who has plugged this idea over the years. The same thing he has done. So uh, what difference does it make? They call everything it's not what they say hate. And these people in the SPLC are the biggest haters on the planet. Uh, this man also uh, talked quite a lot in these strange videos of his about what he called conscience dreaming, but I think is almost certainly uh, meant to be conscious dreaming. So when did he become an expert on these terminologies? To me, what, what he said the first is what the UK, the UK Ultra uses as a term. The other is what David Icke uses, which is nonviolent, peaceful ideologies. Uh, which is an idea that also has been kind of tossed around on the radical right, in particular by a kind of uh, British conspiracy theorist by the name of David Icke. So a lot of these... I so now he's demonizing David Icke because David Icke 
talks against the New World Order and the takeover that is happening right now. This man here kisses the boots of the New World Order and his organization. Ideas, his burning of the flag, his talking about the government as treasonous uh, and using mind control to control the rest of us and so on. These are all ideas or kind of shards of ideas uh, that exist very much on the radical right. And then... Oh, these are on the radical right. When, if you do a research on Loner, you'll find out that everything he was really was ultra left and uh, just, just like him. He's basically an image of him, and but yet he's not on the, the psychotropic drugs that this man, Loner, Gerald, is on, which is, will come out in a couple of weeks. You just wait and bear my name. I know they're going to say he was put on psychotropic drugs like Prozac and Ritalin when he was younger and just of course you know as the Pima County Sheriff said so dramatically uh, and, and so truly I think you know you add those kinds of ideas to just the amazing level of vitriol out there uh, on the airwaves and also in addition to what the sheriff said coming from politicians uh, and it is not entirely surprising you know that someone like this acts out uh, the other item, and it was extraordinary also that the that the um, the sheriff discussed the YouTube video, knew its length, and then, unfortunately, one of those maddening moments when you're sitting so far away, nobody in the crowd said, "Can you confirm that that's his YouTube video?" Which would clarify an awful lot at this point. Uh, but they know about this, um, and and what does that? Yes, the uh, police department knew about this. Sheriff's department, they did nothing to stop him. He was making threats and stuff beforehand. And that's considered terrorism against an official. And yet the sheriff's department did absolutely nothing to stop him, bringing him for questioning or anything. Oh, and by and by, his whole family is like the Adams family. That's another thing that's come out just today on the 11th of January. That mean that they have taken an interest in that in that video and and these uh, presumably the Facebook postings as well. Well, I think what's going on is they're trying to understand a motive. Mm -hmm. uh, I thought one of the more interesting moments in the press conference was when the sheriff confirmed that in fact uh, the authorities believe uh, that the congresswoman really was the target. That this person went to this place in order uh, to do her harm. Uh, you know, and that, of course, suggests that it really is a, a political act, at least in some uh, way. Uh, so, you know, I think that uh, what the evidence suggests, and it is uh, very, very early on, but what the evidence suggests is that this is a man fired up, uh, presumably, by some of the uh, very hot... Com fired up by the mainstream media talking about all this stuff of over the period of six or seven months about, aren't you afraid, Miss... Gifford, that you're going to be attacked because you've been targeted? Aren't you afraid? Aren't you afraid for saying things you're saying? And they kept repeating this over and over in the mainstream media. And now they're going to blame the right-wing talk show host? I don't think so. I'm in Terry out there. Uh, who felt that it was time to go out there and act. And, you know, I think it's worth remembering. I mean, uh, what, about a year ago, uh, when that fellow Joseph Stack flew an airplane into the IRS building in Austin. Right. It was the same kind of that man happened to fly the airplane into it was either either drugged or something or he was like Gerald Calente says when you lose it when you lose everything you lose it and that's what he did he lost everything and he just lost it thing he may well have been mentally ill but he clearly had been influenced by the tax protesters on the radical right uh, you know we've just seen that's right which is blame the tax protesters even though there was, there's was other other stories out there telling of other things that may have led to him flying the airplane in there and why was it that he flew into the wrong building he didn't even fly into the very building they were supposed to fly into was he not drugged maybe and then have the plane uh, remote controlled into another building this hasn't been answered either but this is a speculation this again and again, uh, the episode of bricks being thrown through uh, Congress people's windows, Democratic headquarters, and so on. And of course, that happened, in fact, to the Congresswoman in this case during her own campaign, uh, as the sheriff mentioned. If, uh, if the person is indeed disturbed, does that, in your view, exonerate those who put the crosshairs on Ms. Giffords, on those who use language demonizing liberals or Democrats or just uh, 
leaving the, poli the party out of it, people in office, incumbents, or does it simply underscore why such language, no matter what direction it's pointed in, is so ill-advised? I think the latter. I think there's no exoneration for the people who talk about, uh, uh, you know, who make these, who, who repeat these kinds of falsehoods on the air and in public squares uh, all over this country. You know, the people who say, uh, you know, it's not about health care, it's about the president wanting to kill your grandmother. Uh, you know, it's not about immigration. That came out, that actually came out in the uh, Time magazine on front cover, Killing Grandma. And he's saying that this is right wing saying this. Oh no, it's in the very documentation of the health care bill, the Obama abomination bill. This guy is a piece of work. He's sitting there blatantly lying to the public, saying that he's the expert, he knows everything, and he knows absolutely nothing. He has he's there for the opposition of freedom. And now he's getting ready to talk about immigration, which is another hot issue where we see that the Democrats are forcing the, the immigrants that shouldn't be here by law on to the American people to just bring this country down. Reform. It's about a secret plot on the part of Mexico to reconquer the southwestern United States. Uh, and oh yeah, uh, also that was uh, founded by the Ford Foundation. Uh, do your research on that. You'll see that that's what that's all about. This guy is a piece of work. I mean, you cannot get a person on there, a propagandist as big as he is, from the from the Southern Law Poverty Law Center, these people are monsters, and they're and he's disproving it. That anyone that knows what he's saying is a lie knows this. And on and on and on, uh, you know. While the people who make those statements, uh, you know, obviously do not intend directly for people to be uh, harmed or murdered. Uh, I think it is entirely uh, uh, natural that some people out there who are disturbed. Uh, are usually pushed over the edge by the mainstream media who keeps repeating things like uh, talking to her and showing on TV, oh, you're afraid you're going to be attacked, are you afraid? And then somebody who's mentally unstable, it's almost like a, uh, a trigger word for them to go out and do something, almost a programming, a, uh, a, uh, a uh, news media propaganda programming that sets some of these people off almost like a MK Ultra mind control programming. It's called soft mind control and it's on TV all the time. You just don't realize you're being influenced by it. You know, actually act on these things. Obviously that is a tiny sliver of the number of people who hear these kinds of statements. Mm -hmm. uh, but we've reached a point, as the sheriff suggested, where the vitriol is so white hot out there uh, that some people who are disturbed go out there and commit these kinds of acts. And I think at least on an anecdotal basis, uh, we've been seeing more and more of that in the last couple of years. The last point, and it's kind of a technical one, Mark, uh, we keep saying, and again, the, the sheriff did not say, yes, this was his YouTube video. Uh, but the two of the, the videos begin with, hello, my name is Jared Lee Loeffner, and another one says, my final thoughts, Jared Lee Loeffner. Uh, why is there, uh, is, is this just for the, the sake of the, the, the extraordinary... Why do I always use three, na three names on my assassin? Uh, Lee Harvey Oswald, uh, Gerald Lee uh, Loner. I mean, why are they have three names? It seems like when they do that, that's a sign of something. It just fits in. Early small chance that there are two Jared Lee Lofners or that there's been some mistaken identity in the suspect's arrest or something that we're not saying that these are indeed the transcripts and the, of the videotapes that he posted or someone posted to YouTube? I think it's pretty certain it's the same person and I imagine that the law enforcement officials believe that too. Uh, he not only identifies himself by this quite unusual name, but he also says he's from Tucson. Uh, so I, I think the likelihood of these not being uh, his materials are, is very small indeed. Indeed. Uh, Mark Potok, the director of in the Intelligence Project at Southern Poverty Law Center. Uh, again, great thanks for your time this evening. Another piece of work. So that's all I have time for today. But as you can see, this little, little guy is on there trying to say that he's an expert in all this and he just threw stuff in that was the opposite of what this guy's background is. I mean it's come out that he's a liberal and he's a Democrat believer. He was into the Democratic Party. He was following after her. I mean that's all I got to say for today. So this is Spellbinder with this news update.
be good, be good at it, and have a good day.